I was so excited for this one, man. Uh, after that deflating first negative card last week, uh, also I lost my shirt betting against Pettis last night. Uh, one thing I can say about cards at the Apex on Fight Night is at least the breaks are minimal. Let's go, man. I'm done plugging Twitter. Let's just get straight into this. All right, I'm not going to lie. I got a little bit lucky on this one. Uh, Medescus was slightly more active, finding more head strikes in the first two rounds. Uh, he was finding the counter right well, but gassed quite horribly in the third. Uh, I thought uh, Puyega won the first and third, landing the better strikes, but this was no robbery. It was a close fight. Uh, the 30 27 on the card though was a little bit baffling. That shit is bananas. Uh, nice to get a W uh, on the first fight though. It's been a while since I did that. Nice scrap to start things off. Uh, should you watch it again if you missed it? Hell no. Next. Oh Jesus. This was a shit show. Uh, Drunky Peterson strikes again I guess. Uh, first thing before I get into what happened. Uh, Argueta looked great. Aggressive start on Lawrence. Transition beautifully, trying to find guillotines, anacan anaconda chokes. Uh, slick shit on the ground. Uh, Argueta had a choke in that was looking like it was about to end the fight. Uh, live viewing, I actually thought Lawrence did tap, but the replay revealed what a silly moment this was. Uh, Peterson decided it was time for Lawrence to tap, I guess. Somebody needs to check that man's bet slip. Uh, he grabbed Lawrence's hand, and as he pulled away, Lawrence kind of slapped himself. Uh, Peterson decided to call it for some reason. Bizarre move. Uh, rightly was called a no contest in the moment, but Argueta must be pissed. Looked like he was on the way to a win. Tough break, but good for me. Uh, they need to change these rules, man, and restart the fucking fight when stuff like that happens. Uh, I called this one like a legend. Uh, Bleeder dominated with the wrestling, which was the game plan to go for. Dominated the first two rounds. She did face a little bit of adversity when she tried hard in the third. Which, sorry, when she tired hard in the third, but managed to find another takedown. Uh, she was getting exhausted and punched repeatedly in the mouth, so fair play to her. Uh, I picked her to win by decision and for it to go the distance, so this was a nice win for her. Good job, took me to 2-0. Both these women can't strike. Typical. Alright, I think Bondar might have learning difficulties. You wait for over a year to get back from a brutal injury and you mess around in there like a bellend. Uh, Hernandez demonstrated crisp boxing and was far more active. Uh, weird moment at the end of the third. Uh, Hernandez went for a takedown and there was an accidental clash of heads as Bondar hit the floor that led to a finish. Uh, this was pretty stupid to me. Uh, changed the result from a KO to a decision uh, for Hernandez. Nice performance though. Bondar is going to find a pink slip, in, pink slip in the mail in the morning. He's a fucking idiot. Alright, this fight is a lesson. Uh, Quinones was doing well, throwing strikes, and got a little bit too happy with himself. Uh, he landed a clean strike that had Kang a little hurt, but not enough to go crazy. Uh, Quinones clearly thought it was more than it was. Uh, Kang then counter with a left as Quinones came in uh, and dropped him. Choked this Wally on the ground. Uh, I didn't bet on this, but I bet this one murdered a million parlays. I said don't play, and this is exactly why. Uh, it took me to two and two. Calf kicks, man. They're changing the game. Uh, outside of Sarukian, and we will get to that in a minute. Uh, this was the lock of the cards. Uh, uh, I retired a year ago, and I made a comeback to my profession. And it didn't involve going in there with someone that wants to fuck you up. And I still know what a bad idea it is. Uh, Costa basically chewed Flick's calf up in the first, and could have had him out of there. Uh, Flick was defeated on the stool in between the first and the second and fair play to him he came out and went out on his shield. Tried an emergency takedown after getting the calf booted again but the damage was done. Uh, Costa finished him on the ground to unanswered elbows. Uh, this took me to three and two. This felt like a lot to me. So many Salakov dick riders losing money here. Uh, don't bet against the Viking. Uh, the pace and grappling were the story of this one. Close first round, but once Dalby realized what time it was with the takedown at the end of the first, he used that energy to take over in the last two. Uh, he used the takedowns to drain Salikov, Salikov's gas tank and grew and grew as the fight prog uh, progressed. Uh, this man does not get finished. My call was that if you picked Salikov, you'd be sweating and waiting for him to find his moment to the end. And uh, I took the decision and said it would be close. In reality, it wasn't really. Uh, you could have had Dalby 3-0 to be honest. He was excellent. Uh, 4-2 and yeah I said this was the play and yeah it came through. 
All right, I'm a little bit embarrassed about this one. Something actually fell off my desk and I leaned over to pick it up. And when I look back up in that split moment, uh, Motta was on his side with his toes curled, uh, taking an extra nasty well-timed shot to the face. Uh, to start this off though, uh, Motta uh, landed a really nice shot. I think it was a counter right. And uh, having been in a fight or two myself, Torres had the look on his face like he was rattled, like he was thinking, oh shit. Uh, upon instant replay though, fuck me. Uh, what an elbow. Uh, this is why I'm not doing live streams yet. Rookie move to take your eyes off the game. Uh, Torres avoided an overhand shot, came over the top and bang. Flush shit. Uh, not the kind of finish we see often to be fair. And yeah, this took me to 5-2. and two. This is a good pick. Fighters take notice. Uh, fuck the feeling out process. If you have a game plan and advantage that works, do not give your opponent time to settle and get into a rhythm. Just do your thing. Uh, Sabatini closed the distance immediately and grabbed the takedown, demonstrating the superior wrestling. Uh, he dominated the first. Uh, he dominated from the first 40 seconds in, got that takedown, dominated with ground and pound. Uh, Almeida looked absolutely cooked on the stool, uh, and Pat went back to owning that arse in a second. Pushed his man right back to the fence. Uh, takedown smashing away uh, until the arm submission triangle presented itself. A great win, and this confirmed another winning card for me. Your boy is back all right now uh, this one was really disappointing uh, Leroy Duncan had the reach and seemingly all the advantages but I don't know man he got found out a little bit here didn't really get hurt or outclassed so there's some stock to take in that but he just got pretty much outworked he went with too much spinning nonsense too much playing around use your fucking reach mate uh, I had high hopes for this guy and he just came in there and shit himself now Petrosian is good but this was a winnable matchup and the UFC were clearly setting it up for Leroy, Leroy Duncan to get that notable name on his record. Hype train absolutely derailed. Uh, clear unanimous decision win. Uh, yeah, just took me to six and three. All right, Sarukin was the biggest favorite I've seen for a while and fair play to Silva. He really looked like he belonged, belonged in there. Uh, Sarukin dominated in the grappling and punished him on the ground, finding a finish eventually in the third. But this fight really must have been a wake-up call for him. Uh, Silva hit Sarukian with a massive shot in the second. Uh, he hit a right, then a left. And fair play, Sarukian does have a chin on him. But I kind of had Sarukian earmarked as a future champ. And he is young, but I'm really not sure now. He came through adversity and won in the end. And hopefully he will learn from this. It's a win, but is it a fraud check-in as well? Uh, I don't think there are many fighters at the top scared of him now. Uh, Silva was beaten into retirement though, so... Mm, Dariush maybe should be next for Sarukin. Could be a good one. Alright, this was fight of the night. Nobody's going to be surprised by that. Vittori almost had Jared out of there in the first. Rocked him twice, but maximum credit to Cannoneer. He stayed composed and just took over as the fight went on. Uh, I said uh, Vittori had the greatest chin in the UFC. And this just added to my case strongly. Jesus, they need to study this man. Uh, Cannonier broke the middleweight strike record and hit him with some big shots throughout the fight. Uh, he arguably had a 10-8 in there. I think it was the third. Absolutely great performance. Sadly and rightly though, neither man were going to get a title shot of this. Nobody wants to see either of them fight uh, Starbender again. Uh, Cannonier is still improving at his age and that's so impressive. Pretty sad for Vittori, but I called this. Uh, made a bag off the decision. Great fight. Right, this was a bit of a bounce back card for me. Uh, I took a record of eight and two, or was it eight and three? Uh, taking my year record to 148 and 72. So I'm back at 67%. Uh, Emmett and Tapuria next, which is another decent fight night card. So we have that to look forward to. Have a great week and I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe Tuesday for that breakdown. We'll see, I'm a busy man, in a bit.